Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Chromaglow. Today's episode three has two themes. The first one you were expecting, the one week update from using the Caracor. The second is more unexpected, and you probably noticed it in the title of today's show. During all my practice time with the Caracorder this week, my mind got to wandering, and I started thinking about how fast the Caracorder was. One of the first things that popped up when I think fastest was cars which immediately brings to mind the Bugatti Chiron. In case you're not familiar, this is a Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 Plus, the fastest production car in the world. As soon as this came to mind, I realized the Caracorder is the Bugatti of Keeps. That launched me into doing some research, and here are some fun facts about the Bugatti. Just as a refresher, here is the Caracorder. And yes, I've included a few fun facts about it as well. My research here shows they're basically the same thing. I mean, how could you deny this, considering they're both made out of lightweight plastics and aerospace aluminum? Both of them begin with the letter C. Both of them are designed to do one thing only, go very, very fast, as well as either of them could easily be used for props as alien technology in science fiction. In light of the stunning parallels between the two, I think it's only fair that I add a stretch goal to this project. In addition to documenting the adoption process of using the Caracorder, this project will now also document if I am able to type faster than the fastest Bugatti in the next six months. I am also pledging to do my best for the next six months to find somebody who owns a Bugatti. My goal will be to make a video of me trying to type faster than the speeds we are traveling on various different types of roads. Please make sure to share this video with anyone you think might be able to help us achieve this goal. Getting all those shenanigans out of the way, let's get to the update. While giving this update, I'll let some footage roll of me typing as well as using the Caracorder web tool to show my current level of progress. I've now had seven days to use the Caracorder. During that time, I have logged eight hours of practice. As stated previously, the beginning was brutal. The first four and a half hours was incredibly difficult to map the locations of the keys to the letters in my mind. In fact, it wasn't until just after four and a half hours that I made it to the second level of the training tool. Even being a typing enthusiast, I hit the wall trying to learn to use the Caracorder almost immediately. I took a few short breaks to use KeyBR, as previously said, but eventually stuck with the Caracorder training tool. Once things started to click, I started to jump through levels rather quickly. I noted my progression, and it went something like this. Level 1, level 2, level 6, level 12, level 22, 23, and 24, all by 5 hours. As you can see, there was quite a jump from being on level 2 at 4.5 hours to level 24 half an hour later. Another half hour got me to level 40 and 8 words per minute. By the time I reached 8 hours of practice, I was at level 76 and 10 words per minute. 8 hours may seem like too large of a commitment for some people, but I've enjoyed myself so far. My goal is to adopt the Caracorder as quickly as possible to see whether I can make the constant communication at my job more efficient. Before I wrap up today's episode, I have a quick question to answer for a viewer. Alex wrote in to ask if there's difficulty in actuating letters that are bound to the same joysticks. He was interested to know whether you need to directionally press on joysticks in order to actuate the letters, or whether you can do some old school Street Fighter combo moves and make rounded motions to go from one letter to the letter below it. Alex, combo moves like that may be possible. Unfortunately, at the moment, I can't tell. My current level of finesse and coordination is too jerky and twitchy to get that level of sophistication. My only other comment around this subject would have to do with the spacebar. I've had a lifetime of experience of using my thumbs to just do one thing when typing, and that is space. After this experience, it turns out it's quite a feat to train your brain to learn that each of your thumbs now has 15 new tasks that it can potentially do. Additionally, it's incredibly awkward for the first few hours that your left index finger moving the switch to the left is now space. Well, that's about it from here. Next update is supposed to be after one month of use, 
I'll probably do a couple before then just to keep everybody updated. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with any typing enthusiasts in your life. Also, everyone, please comment and vote whether you think I'll be able to type faster than a Bugatti. I'll tally the results and post it in the update. Until next time, take it easy, everyone.